Holy crap, this was a big one. Welcome back to Wasting Time in the Woods in another episode in our series on how to freshen up an old 4Runner, this old truck. In the next couple of episodes, we're gonna completely tear down the suspension of our third generation 4Runner and rebuild it with a whole buttload of Toyota love. What do you think the metric equivalent of a buttload is? Do you think they use the king's butt to measure the load back in the old days? Speaking of butts, we'll start with the rear because it's so much simpler than the front. Then we'll move on to the front, which has a whole lot more moving parts and a lot more heartache in my case. I'll show you how to replace or rebuild all the shocks, springs, control arms, sway bar links, tie rod ends. We'll also press out and replace all the bushings and ball joints completely to freshen up this classic off-roader without breaking the bank or resorting to a bunch of aftermarket parts. Well, I did use a few aftermarket parts, but we'll get into that later. Now, I'm gonna be honest. This one might take you a couple days. I mean, it took me three weeks, but I had to change a lot of camera batteries and I'm an idiot. But all the same, you better grab yourself a six pack because one beer, I don't think it's gonna cut it for this one. All right. Go pretend to be mechanics again. Oh, oh, that's good. Definitely gonna need at least three beers for this one. Maybe five. D depends on your tolerance level. I don't know. I don't know how much you drink. All right, guys. Now, the first thing I wanna say is that I'm not a real mechanic. I'm just an idiot with a bunch of Amazon tools. This video is for entertainment purposes only. I don't wanna have to have an awkward conversation with your insurance agent or your wife later about how I told you not to do essentially anything that I'm about to show you that I did. All right, so how do you know that you need to replace the suspension in your 4Runner? Well, Lindsay had about 215,000 miles on her and she drove like shit. She drifted a bit and it felt like the wheels were gonna fall off every time we hit a speed bump. That's actually a real thing with these. When the lower ball joint on a third generation 4Runner fails, that wheel, tends to fall off. It was pretty obvious that Lindsay needed her suspension flipped by the way her bum was dragging, but I also took her down to my local shop so that we could put her on a lift and get a real good look underneath her. Um, these lower control arm bushings inside, they're kind of hard to see and get an angle on, but they are cracked and broken all the way through. You would replace your sway bar end links. They're oh yeah. To fray on the bushings here. Yep, and the sway bar bushings are all yeah. totally gone. Yeah. And age, the coils? Going, yep, I got that. Okay. What about for bushings or anything suspension back here? You see anything it's, that's... Other than your shock, you're gonna come with new bushings. Yep. Everything else is, is looking really good as far as all the bushings inside here awesome. and these four links go. Okay, so just shocks and springs back here, huh? Yep, even okay. the sway bars are, are in excellent condition. Now, since the front is such a pain compared to the back, I decided to just replace everything. We use mostly Toyota parts with a few exceptions because I wanted to keep it pretty close to stock since it's going to be a daily driver for my wife. We went with Toyota 99 tall springs all around which are about a half inch taller than the other years that the third gen was made. These things have so much ground clearance stock already I really didn't think that we needed to lift it with anything more than that. We used Bilstein 5100s for the shocks. I probably could have just used the Toyota KYB shocks but these are extended travel and just in case we want to lift it in the future I just wanted to have that flexibility. They also have an adjustable preload in the front and we'll get to how I set them up when we cover the front install. Now I did resort to aftermarket parts in a couple places. We went with aftermarket sway bar end links because they're like 20 bucks and Toyota wanted $90 each. I just couldn't justify paying that for something that I can change later without even taking the tire off. I also used an aftermarket inner tie rod end because I might need to replace the whole rack someday anyway. All right, to complete this project, you'll need two grand worth of Toyota spare parts, $500 worth of AutoZone loaner tools, and one pair of holy jeans. I went with AutoZone on the loaner tools because the guys over at the Amazon loaner tool program kept saying, hey jerkface, we don't have a loaner tool program. Stop returning dirty tools. All right, let's get greasy. The rear suspension in a third gen 4Runner consists of a five link trailing arm system, coil springs, and shocks. The spring sit and perches on the axle and the secondary bump stops act as spring isolators at the top where they sit in pockets on the chassis. All the bushings were good back here so all we had to replace were the springs, shocks, and sway bar end links. Now make sure that you take measurements of your ride height before you get started so later you can brag to all your friends about how fast your baby's growing. The first thing I did was jack up the truck until the axle was at full droop and toss the tires under the frame for safety. I forgot to take the spare tire out. Make sure you take the spare tire out. 
All right, well, forgot to take the uh, e-brake off and now it's stretched so tight. I'm surprised it didn't break. Now, once you've got it jacked up, there's a hierarchy of limiting factors to keep the spring smashed between the axle and the frame. The first is the shock. Anytime you get airborne in the truck, the shock is the first thing that keeps the axle from dropping so far that the spring just falls out, which would be embarrassing. Just ask this guy. Oh, hey, 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 hang on. Your spring fell out just like I said, bro. Put it, Put it in park. The shocks are mounted to the axle on the bottom and the frame on the top. Getting them off the axle is easy. It's 25 years old. Ow! That hurt. But the nut always rests into the post where they mount on the frame at the top. All right, now we gotta get the top of the shock off and this is supposed to be one of the biggest pains on this truck because they're up above here. There's, there's the shock right there. And it goes up. But everybody says you can just cut them right there. So I thought I'd try a wrench first. There's no way that's gonna take forever. All right, well, that method wasn't really working out. So now we're gonna try this method. Once I got the shocks out, I realized why these things always seize up and rust. They've got these little weep holes and they just fill up with dirt so that water just gets trapped in the pocket and makes everything rust up there after a while. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Drilling out those weep holes just a little bit more so that they can pass that dirt through probably would have made sure that that never happened again. But that would have taken like 10 or 15 minutes, so I skipped it. I probably should have detached the sway bar next like the factory service manual suggests, but I was in a hurry, so I just bounced on the axle a few times until the spring fell out. All right guys, so I got the old ones out, and I'm surprised they're not that much shorter than the new ones. That one is you know, 15 and 5 eighths. This one is 15 and 9 sixteenths. And these that I got from Paul, which are already broken in because he rode on them for a month before he switched to heavier springs, are 16 even. And 16 and an eighth. So about a half inch difference. Getting the new spring in requires a bit more clearance, so I went ahead and disconnected the sway bar inlings like I should have done in the first place. Now reinstalling the shocks was pretty easy. All you have to do is get the bushings and washers together in this order. The washer with the locating collar goes below the shock mount and the bushing goes above it. That's pretty much it. I did end up replacing the sway bar in links because they looked pretty beat when I was done. I wonder if that has something to do with me putting a bottle jack between the axle and the frame instead of following the manual and disconnecting them. Hmm, we'll never know. After I slapped the tires back on, we ended up with about an inch and a quarter of lift. So we probably gained about a half inch from switching to the 99 talls and we eliminated about three quarters of an inch of sag. Overall, I'd say replacing the rear suspension on third gen 4Runner is a, it's a two beer job. I only broke one bolt, and it probably would have only taken a couple hours if I wasn't filming. The factory service manual has all the torque specs, diagrams, and procedures, so make sure you get a copy of it if you can. Now, in the next part of the series, we're going to crack into the front suspension, which required a half dozen trips to AutoZone, a blowtorch, and some serious freaking patience. We'll see you out there.